There are several types of enthalpy changes. We should be familiar with all of them. In IUPAC nomenclature, the type of change will be attached as a suffix to the delta itself because it's saying that this is the change in enthalpy going from point A to point B and the point A and B, the, the change that's being specified is on that suffix. So let's look at some specific, cha specific changes. Let's start with phase, with phase changes. So the three different enthalpy changes shown here are all phase changes. The first is the heat of fusion. Notice that despite the name, this is the heat for melting one mole of substance. Next, we have the heat of vaporization. That's the heat associated with vaporizing one mole of substance. So notice that each of these so far have a specific direction implied. So for the heat of fusion, it's going from solid to liquid. And for the heat of vaporization, it's going from liquid to gas. We also have the heat of sublimation, which is the heat associated with taking one mole of substance from the solid phase directly to the gas phase. At a given temperature, the heat of sublimation has to be the sum of the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization because enthalpy is a state function. Let's look at three other enthalpy changes, in this case associated with ionic compounds. First is the lattice enthalpy. The lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy change associated with going from a solid ionic compound into gas phase ions. Now we should be careful, this is the lattice dissociation enthalpy, and that's how lattice enthalpy is defined in our textbook, OpenStax. Many texts use lattice formation enthalpy as the main definition of lattice enthalpy, so you should check with your own text and your own professor to see which sign convention you're using. It's actually pretty easy to tell which type you're looking at by looking at the numbers. Lattice dissociation enthalpy, which is the one we're talking about here, is always going to be a positive number. It's always endothermic to take a solid, solid phase ionic compound and blow it apart into individual gas phase ions. It's endothermic, we have to put energy in because we're essentially breaking ionic bonds. Hydration enthalpy is the enthalpy change when we take the gas phase ions, so separate cations and anions in the gas phase, and plunge them into water. Because this involves the formation of ion dipole interactions between the water and the ions, this process is always going to be exothermic. So these numbers will always be negative. The solution enthalpy, or heat of solution, is the enthalpy change associated with dissolving one mole of a compound in a solvent. So for instance, we could take an ionic compound like sodium chloride and dissolve it in water. We can't predict ahead of time whether the heat of solution will be positive or negative, whether it's going to be an endothermic or exothermic process, because the heat of solution is the sum of the lattice enthalpy and the hydration enthalpy. As we've defined it, the lattice enthalpy is positive, the heat of hydration will be negative, and since we don't know ahead of time what the relative sizes of those two terms will be, we can't predict whether the heat of solution will be positive and negative. And in fact, some salts, when dissolved in water, make the water get colder. Some salts dissolved in water make the water get hotter. So both circumstances do exist. The first enthalpy change is just delta H of reaction. And so this is just the enthalpy change for any reaction. So this is just a generic term, meaning we've got some chemical reaction. What is the enthalpy change for that reaction as written? So we actually have to specify the reaction for this to mean anything. The heat of combustion or combustion enthalpy is the 
heat released when one mole of compound burns an oxygen. Uh, this is a number that's tabulated for essentially all hydrocarbons and because it's easy to measure. And it's important to note that for combustion enthalpies, we're talking about a reaction where the substance is combusted and, and uh, oxidized all the way up to carbon dioxide and water. So not carbon monoxide, we have to oxidize all the way to carbon dioxide. Finally, we have the heat of formation, formation enthalpy. So this is the enthalpy change associated in a reaction where we make one mole of compound from elements. And the elements have to be in their standard state. So for instance, if one of the elements we're using to form our compound is oxygen, that oxygen has to be O2 and not just O. Uh, if we're one of the elements we're forming it from is carbon, it has to be carbon in the form of graphite, not diamonds. So the, the standard state for most elements will be the most common form of that element.